Hi there, Smart Drivers talking to you tonight about road trips with Easter coming up next weekend. Many of you are going to be traveling to visit friends and family and hopefully we'll give you a few defensive driving tips that will keep you safe on the roadway if you're traveling on the interstates and freeways and other highways, particularly the two-lane roads because I uh, had a little bit of a scare coming back from Calgary a couple of weeks ago and I'll talk more about that when we get to the comments or the, to the discussion rather of the live stream. Mallory is tuning in from the Maritimes. Evan is here. Tim is tuning in from Winnipeg. If you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from in the world. And Corey is here. Corey is Bricks for Wheels. He is the moderator and does an excellent, excellent job of keeping out the bad people as well as getting up the videos that I suggest you have a look at for more detail on questions that I answer. Sean is tuning in from Minnesota, which is awesome. How is the weather in Minnesota, Sean? And Joe is tuning in from Toronto. First thing this morning, snow on the ground. <laughs> it is that time of year, Joe. It's been really cool here and windy, and uh, depending where you are here in the Okanagan Valley, snow in some places, of course, but uh, you know, in higher elevations, uh, I think a week ago, they got like 15 centimeters up on top of the Coquihalla, which is uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, it's not part of the Trans-Canada Highway because the Trans-Canada Highway runs down the Fraser Valley as I was corrected by native British Columbians when I, a couple of years ago when I said something on one of my videos. But the Coquihalla is the main bypass highway and uh, you know it's a high mountain pass and you can get some fairly unpredictable weather there especially this time of year if you're on March break and going down to the lower manland as Vancouver and the Sunshine Coast is called. So, uh, 45 centimeters of snow on Wednesday in Winterpeg. <laughs> uh, yes, and that's that's wonderful Winnipeg in Manitoba there. So, uh, crazy, crazy amount of winter. And uh, Sean says that it's quite nice outside on in, in, in the weekend there. My friend Tim is here from Drive Smart BC. Uh, be sure to check out Tim's website if you are in the province of British Columbia. Excellent information over there. Great articles on traffic safety, road maintenance, uh, road construction, building, engineering, courts, case law, and legislation. And as well, there's a forum over there if you want to have a discussion with other experts and professionals in the field. Definitely check out Drive Smart BC. Bai is here, how are you? And uh, hello, hello, hello. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know what class of license you're going for, if it's just a car license, or you wanna start your career as a truck or bus driver. We can help you out with all of that. And be sure to check out Past Your Driver's Test First Time course package over at the Smart Drive Test website. As a bonus, we throw in both the winter and defensive driving smart courses all the tips and strategies from the winter driving course will help you with any inclement weather, sleet, rain, snow, all of that goofy stuff, and will make you a safer, smarter driver. And, you know, of course, <laughs> turn on the defrost and whatnot so you can keep the glass clear while you're driving. And as well, the rule of thumb, windshield wipers on, headlights on. And my friend Big Mac Sam is here from the Bronx in New York State. If you're taking a driver's test, definitely check out Sam's channel as well. Excellent information over there about passing your test in the state of New York, in the Empire State. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Tim, you are most welcome. 12 centimeters of snow on parts of the island today. And of course, on Vancouver Island, like in Seattle and parts of Washington, Oregon, Northern California, if you get snow there, it is a very different snow than if it is sub-zero temperatures. It's greasy and slick and slimy and something else to try and drive in so know that for the purposes of driving in these places where the temperature is around zero and uh, just you know we do have a winter driving playlist here Corey will stick that up for you if you want some information about that uh, just don't be watching the videos while you're driving <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a video of Evan Carmichael the other day. He was having a Zoom meeting. And, of course, in the background, one of the participants in the Zoom meeting was driving his car while he's participating with audio, with video, in a Zoom meeting. So, 
a little bit of distracted driving. Uh, there you go. So Tim's saying that uh, with the 12 centimeters of snow, he's north of Nanaimo, which is about midway up Vancouver Island. He stayed home and shoveled his snow today. Uh, Liz, I passed uh, my full G on uh, just after I watched your video. So congratulations on passing your license. Liz, that is excellent, excellent news. Uh, and Tyler said, if you have a Tesla, you can watch Netflix while you're driving. Of course, obviously, it's probably on autopilot. See how long it takes you to come back into, you know, the driving scenario. If it gives you one of those warnings, right? We see those videos on YouTube where they crash into things because the driver didn't come back in. So, Liz, you passed your full G. That is awesome. Congratulations on getting your full license. That is absolutely incredible news. Awesome, awesome. What did you do to go and celebrate uh, getting your full license? Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's get over to the presentation here. We'll get through that and then we'll come back. And as I said, it takes about 10 minutes, 12 minutes to get through the presentation. After that, we'll come back and we will answer any questions you have about passing your driver's test, safer, being a safer, smarter driver, or upgrading to a bus or truck license and starting a career as that. So today we're talking about high driving, road trips and holidays. Uh, going away for Easter next weekend and remaining safe. For those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I've been, I was a truck driver in the 1990s, most of that decade running freight from uh, Ontario, Canada into the States. Uh, drove mostly the Eastern Seaboard, east of the Mississippi, but I did make it out to the Western States, uh, California, Oregon, Washington State, and whatnot. While I was going to university in Australia, I drove for Greyhound there in one of the regional bus lines and uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my instruction has been with commercial vehicles, big trucks and buses. I did do some driver training, uh, driver rehabilitation rather, uh, people that had experienced debilitating injuries, strokes or lost a limb, taught them how to drive with hand controls. 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne with a doctorate in policing, uh, which are legal history rather, which is a study of policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic. Uh, 2015, I started the online business, the Smart Drive Test YouTube channel. Spent a lot of time on that. Uh, tons and tons of resources there to help you pass a driver's test, start a career as a truck or bus driver and the business the youtube channel has been wildly more successful than i could have ever imagined i mean this year we're going to pass surpass 250,000 subscribers on the youtube channel which just completely <laughs> blows my mind and thank you very much for all of your uh, support your feedback your questions your comments your queries uh, it just helps us uh, support more people in being safer smarter drivers and Corey's put up the autobiography there. Have a look at that if you want to know more about me. New video this week, five things you should know about taking your CDL pre-trip inspection when you show up for your test at the DMV. And this is directed towards tractor trailers, but people who are taking any commercial license, uh, bus or ambulance or uh, small bus, less than 25 passengers, which uh, we call here in British Columbia class four and other places it's called different things, a G, in Ontario and whatnot, but uh, have a look at that video for sure, and Corey will put the link up for that as well. The first thing you want to do before you head out is you want to do some car care. You want to have, you know, do check the simple things. Check the oil on your vehicle. Uh, some vehicles have a dipstick. If you have a high-end German car like an Audi, as Tracy has, my girlfriend, uh, you'll check it on the instrument panel inside of the vehicle. You want to check the brake fluid, the oil, windshield washer fluid for sure, especially this time of the year. Uh, what else do you want to check in there? The power steering fluid and uh, the radiator fluid. Check all of the fluids. Uh, check your tire pressure. If you don't have tire pressure sensors on your vehicle, then get yourself a tire pressure gauge. They're inexpensive. Check the wiper blades. You know, if you've been ignoring those for quite some time, but you're dr just driving around town and whatnot, uh, that's okay, but maybe it's time to go out and actually get those checked. But if you need something else fixed, maybe you need to take it into your technician, your automotive technician. They're not called mechanics anymore. My brother is an automotive technician, and he gets very excited and upset at me <laughs> when I call them uh, mechanics. So it's not mechanics, automotive technicians. 
All right, uh, the next thing you want to know after you do the car care, check your car out, all out, make sure that it's not going to leave you on the side of the road and whatnot, is navigation if you don't know where you're going. Okay, and uh, one of the other things that really helps with this, as I discovered when I visited Sam last fall there in New York City and New York State, is get a holder for your phone. If you're one of those people that has just been putting it off for whatever reason, the same as I did for a very long time, go and get yourself a good phone holder. I'll tell you, in terms of navigation, there is nothing better, nothing better. As well, you can check it out on Google Maps before you leave. If you don't know where you're going or you don't understand what the directions are telling you, telling you then call the, the people at the other end and ask them to give you uh, directions. The other thing with Google Maps and planning it out before you head out is, is that you can plan breaks uh, for, especially if you're traveling with children and maybe seniors and those types of things. Stop at some nice restaurants and whatnot. And uh, if you do get lost while you're driving, stop and ask for directions or stop and figure it out on your vehicle. And uh, Tim here at Drive Smart BC just said, check the tire depth, yes, and check all your lights as well. Uh, excellent advice and all of that is in the video. Uh, you wanna make sure that your brake lights work, you wanna make sure your signals work, uh, you wanna make sure your parking and your headlights, high beams, low beams, all of those things work. Uh, license plate lights, all of that stuff and check your tire tread depth, especially if you're heading down to Seattle or Oregon or Vancouver Island where they get lots of rain. Uh, if you don't have good tread depth, you're going to hydroplane on highways if there's any amount of water and that is going to, you know, it's going to compromise your safety. So know that for the purposes of driving. Activities, if you're traveling with kids, uh, I've had lots of uh, road trips with my kids have lots of food at the available, have lots of drinks in the car. Uh, last year when we drove across the country to Ontario from British Columbia, which is about 2,800 miles, it's about 4,000 kilometers, uh, I went out and actually bought a cooler that plugs into the car. And uh, it's, you know, it's been a great cooler. I mean, it was expensive to purchase initially, but uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, to have food in the vehicle and whatnot. And my friend Goose is here. Hello, Goose from Sudbury, Northern Ontario. He's the driving instructor there. How are you, my friend? So games have games as well. Uh, audio books on CDs and podcasts and those types of things. All of that you can have in the vehicle and make sure you have this stuff accessible. <laughs> and the other thing that I would suggest if you're traveling with children and yourself and those types of things, have a garbage bag in the vehicle and as well, implement the rule with your family that when they get out of the vehicle if you're stopped at a coffee shop or restaurant or whatnot take the garbage with you don't just leave it in a bag in the car right there's garbage bins all over the place just get the stuff out of the car and then it's not a hazard in the vehicle all right so preparation food and drink in the vehicle assign different roles to different people right if you're the passenger you're going to be navigating helping out looking for landmarks and those types of things have blankets and pillows in the vehicle for people that are going to get uh, cold or you know want to have a nap while you're driving and whatnot. And then prescription medication as well. If you're on prescription medication, have that with you. If you haven't been on it for a while or it's new or those types of things, know what the effects of the prescription medication are. Know that maybe you can't drive with the prescription medication. Maybe your spouse or your partner needs to drive and uh, just know that because more people are inebriated from prescription medications and over-the-counter medications than those from illegal substances and cannabis and alcohol and those types of things so know that prescription medications have side effects uh cruise control i talk about cruise control i'm a very i'm a huge lover of cruise control uh if you're watching now or you're watching on the replay let me know whether you like cruise control and you use it i find it really reduces distracted driving it really reduces the fatigue when i'm driving and uh, actually you know newer cars i find it surprising that a lot of people don't use cruise control which is interesting especially with all of the technological assisting stuff that's on newer cars you know lane assist adaptive cruise control those types of things uh you know forward hazard detection warning systems and whatnot there's a lot of technology on newer cars that you can put into place 
And uh, with lane assist, I've talked to a few people that uh, have said to me that with these types of technologies on their vehicle on long highway trips, they barely touch the steering wheel because the vehicle basically drives itself. You know, a little bit like a Tesla. But again, you can get into trouble. So know that for the purposes of driving on long highway trips. Uh, night driving, there's a video here on night driving. So know that. Uh, drowsy drivers rest in pieces. The only cure for being tired at night is getting some rest pull into a rest area get an hour of kip you know lock the doors keep yourself safe get some sleep and those types of things you know and you know book a hotel go into a hotel get a hotel those types of things because you know it's going to seem pretty inexpensive uh you know after you rock, you get home and you're home in one piece as opposed to if you have a crash uh, a few years ago, I was coming back from Vancouver Island where my rental property is. And, uh, you know, I drove down in the morning. I was driving back at night and uh, I got to about midnight and I was in Chilliwack and it was like, I was done. I just went into a booked a hotel and got up the next morning and drove home. So that's what you need to do. Should have a break every couple of hours. Get out, drive around the vehicle. Uh, plan breaks, as I said before, for children, playgrounds and those types of things. Uh, us, for example, when we drive down to Vancouver Island, uh, we get down to Hope and we stop there and uh, there's a playground there, there's coffee shops, those types of things. We can get fuel at the same time. Uh, this is the other thing, you got to know how far you can go with a tank of fuel in your vehicle. You don't want to drive less than a quarter of a tank when you're out on the highways and those types of things. If it's quarter tank, half a tank, just know that you need to start putting fuel in your vehicle. I know that's a little more expensive now. It's a lot more expensive now. <laughs> Most of us are paying twice the amount of money uh, to put fuel in our vehicles and uh, that hurts. Okay, uh, restaurants. If you stop for restaurants and have big meals, try and have smaller meals while you're driving and that way you're not, uh, you're not gonna get drowsy and driving drowsy and being tired and those types of things so you know space you know smaller meals more often is better when you're driving for long trips if you're driving make sure you take off bulky coats and those types of things you want to be comfortable while you're driving uh, have emergency clothes in the vehicle you know if you break down or like last fall when we had the floods here and some people ended up sitting on top of their car for 24 hours before they were rescued uh, I could imagine that they were a little chilly by the time the emergency crew sh showed up uh, if you need back supports or other access accessibility items in the vehicle those types of things have those available as well and uh, make sure that you can see when you're driving if the back of it's packed up and those whatnot that your mirrors aren't uh, obstructed so you can see now, if you have emergency breakdowns and whatnot, uh, don't pull off the side of the road or the highway unless it is absolutely an emergency. I cannot stress this enough. If you can limp up to a gas station or you can limp to an off-ramp or those types of things, get off the freeway because I will tell you, I have sat on the side of the freeway with a broken down vehicle. It is a very dangerous, dangerous place. Make sure that you have a cell phone charging cable in your vehicle. This comes back to the holder because if your vehicle breaks down, you can't call for help if you don't have a cell phone that's charged, okay? And if you're going on these long trips and you're not handy, you can't change a tire, you can't use duct tape, as Tim was saying here, tools and jumper cables and those types of things. If you don't know how to use any of that stuff, then get a AAA membership, a, uh, an American Automotive Assistance package. They're inexpensive. They're only they're less than $100 a year for these types of things. You can get your vehicle towed. They will come out. They will change your tires. They'll bring you fuel if you run out of fuel. Or they'll give you a boost. So consider all of that if you're going on long trips as well. Good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right answer. So we'll get back over here. Uh, yes, 12, minute, 12 centimeters of snow on Vancouver Island, Julek. Uh, not here in British Columbia you know, as a whole. Uh, it has been very chilly here and kind of windy and cold. So, uh, yes. Uh, Tim says he gets stuck in bad weather. You'll be glad your tank is closer to full than empty. <laughs> and that's exactly what I said. And, uh, you know, same thing. You just don't want to run out of fuel. You don't want to be stuck on the side of the road. I mean, we were coming back last year. I had a couple of times that goofy me, I had a thing with the buggy that when it got to a half a tank, I was looking for a fuel station and I would go in and I would fill the buggy up. Now, 
we left Winnipeg at 4.30 in the morning, and we're going, and I'm trying to think of the name of the, the, the town in northern Ontario, but anyway, I had a half a tank of fuel, and it was 200 kilometers, well, the bottom half of the buggy's fuel tank, my 1998 Honda CRV, only gets about 200 kilometers on a half, on the bottom half of the tank. By the time we were got we got there, we were getting in on fumes, and I was getting a bit, a bit anxious about whether we were going to keep going or those types of things. And as Tim said, if you get stuck, you're stranded on the side of the road, or you get unexpected snow, as we're getting right now in the mountains, and you you are there for a while, you want to keep your vehicle running and you need fuel in the tank. So it's always better and always easier to fill up the top half of the tank than it is to fill up the bottom half of the tank. So keep your vehicle uh, with fuel in it and that way you're not going to get into trouble. Uh, Mallory says that they had snow there in the Maritimes last Monday. Uh, Tyler, I've seen people with Tesla sleep uh, with autopilot on and yes, Tyler, I hear that that happens. Uh, me personally, I don't trust technology that much. Uh, not after watching some of the videos uh, on YouTube of the serious, serious fails with the Tesla's autopilots. Uh, Joe says, long weekend in Montreal this summer. Hopefully, uh, took the car into Toyota for a pre-trip checkup and they found serious brake disc wear. Uh, good thing they fixed it before the trip. And yes, uh, Joe, that's awesome. And the other thing, Joe, about that, you got that fixed at home. <laughs> uh, the uh, five tips to find a good mechanic or a good automotive technician uh, that I put up a couple of weeks ago that Corey will put that video up for you. One of the things that I said in that is get your vehicle fixed at home. Uh, if you're out and on the road and it's an emergency, then yes, get it fixed, but don't go away and get your vehicle fixed. I took my vehicle to my brother's to get the brakes fixed on it when we were away and you know fixed the brakes and those types of things came back and unfortunately the calipers on the front of the brakes on the front of the buggy were leaking so I had to take it into a shop and get them fixed <laughs> you know had it been in my had I been in Ontario near my brothers he would have just replaced them because they were under warranty but because He's in Ontario, and I'm here. I had to take him into a shop and get them fixed for about 400 bucks, which really, really irked me that uh, I had to pay again to get the front brakes fixed on the vehicle. And then they rebuild the calipers, the braking system on the front of the vehicle. And so if you want to actually keep the parts, because I was going to keep the parts, ship them back to my brother, and he would warranty them for me. Uh, they wanted another hundred fifty dollars for that because they recycle them, they rebuild them, and I was just like, ah, pff, carry on. Uh, Tyler, every time I change my brake pads, I change the rotors as well. Uh, yeah, excellent. If you're going to change the brake pads, I mean, rotors are inexpensive. Uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about disc brakes, and disc brakes are a steel plate, which is the rotor, and it's the brake pads are like a C clamp on the top. They pinch the the spinning disc here and that's what bring your brings your vehicle to a stop so we're talking about rotors and uh brake pads on disc brakes uh sam me and uh both rick i don't know trust that type of technology for cars i feel more comfortable when i'm in control of the car and you know sam it's interesting that you and i are both kind of the same when it comes to cars that we want to drive the vehicles i'm a huge advocate of cruise control but i still feel very much in control of the vehicle when I'm on cruise control and you know and maybe it's just weird because I drive the old buggy the old CRV uh, 1998 Honda CRV but you know I can just touch the clutch and disengage cruise on the buggy or you know you can use the accelerate and decelerate buttons to adjust the speed one mile per hour up and down or you can just turn it off completely so I, some people would argue, well, you're still using technology when you're on cruise control. How is that different than autopilot on a Tesla? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, you can engage and disengage it and those types of things. But the, I think the issue is, is that we're in a transition period, especially the Teslas, where you kind of have to be paying attention, but you don't really need to be paying attention. And I think a lot of people kind of get lulled and, you know, it's kind of, 2% of the time in a Tesla, you have to be paying attention. 
And if you, and it's that 2% of the time when traffic crashes happen with these vehicles. So I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. Uh, Tim said, dad was a service station owner. He said the best thing that ever happened to the shop was self-serve gas stations. Uh, you don't check, make sure sometimes qualified does. Uh, I didn't understand that last part, Tim. Uh, but uh, <laughs> if you don't check, make sure someone qualified does. Oh, okay. I understand what you're saying. Uh, so if you don't check it, make sure that somebody who's qualified does, in fact, check your vehicle. And that's that's exactly right. Uh, you know, many cases, drivers, you know, and I watch some of these fail videos on YouTube and I see them on Facebook and those types of things. And... The, you know, and watch the YouTube channel just rolled in some of the things that people do to their vehicles or some of the things that have happened to their vehicles and people are bringing them into the shop going, oh, there's a, there's a rattle in the front end and you look in the front end and the transmission, there's a, there's a gaping hole in the bottom of the transmission. You can look up and see the gears or there's a gaping hole in the bottom of the oil pan and you can see up and see the, the crankshaft with the main bearings just like hanging out of the engine. <laughs> It's just like, oh my God. And this is why, I mean, you know, I talk about defensive driving all the time and I can just see most people out there in YouTube world kind of just shaking their head and it's like, oh yeah, people aren't like that. And I'm like, yeah, people are like that. And you don't know what vehicle, what the condition of that vehicle is next to you. You don't know what condition the driver is in, uh, you know, and I mean, Cannabis is legal in most of the western states in Colorado. It's legal here in British Columbia and most of Canada and people can buy it. There's a lot of people who are driving their cars and they've been smoking cannabis. There's a lot of people who are still drinking and driving. <laughs> so, you know, this is the reason that I talk defensive driving because you have no idea who's in that vehicle. You have no idea what shape what mechanical shape that vehicle is in. Most of us here, most of the smart drivers watching here on the YouTube, on the live stream now, or most of the smart drivers watching on the replay, we're all kind of in tune with our vehicles. We look after our vehicles, we care for our vehicles, but you see some of these vehicles going up and down the road and the, the exhaust is falling off of it. If the exhaust is falling off of it, you can be pretty guaranteed that the tires aren't very good on it either. So know that. That's just an unfortunate reality of some of the vehicles that are going up and down the road. Uh, Mallory, as a passenger on long road trips, I like to listen to music. I find it makes the time go by faster. Absolutely. And one of the things that my kids and I do when we drive and uh, just went to Cal uh, Calgary a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, and uh, we listen to audiobooks. Uh, just go and get them. I still have a CD player in the buggy. I actually insisted on that when we changed out the stereo last year. Or you can get them on your pod, you know, on your iPod, on your phone, or those types of things, and listen to them. You can listen to podcasts and whatnot. So there's a lot of good things that you can listen to while you're driving up and down the road. Uh, Tyler, I hate push button start vehicles. Easier to steal the immobilizer key, impossible to steal since you need the original key. Um, <laughs> well, you know what they say, Tyler? Locks are for honest people. If somebody really wants to steal your car they're going to figure out how to steal it. And, you know, and I know that it's probably a little bit easier because you just need the immobilizer and then get in the vehicle and push button and away you go. But you still need that fob. And uh, it's really not much different than having to get the key to get into your vehicle. So, uh, Joe, people sleeping in Teslas? Surely not. That's crazy. No brain, no pain. Uh, yeah, Joe, people do. People sleep in their Teslas when they're on... Uh, <laughs> when when they're on uh, autopilot uh sam says my vehicle is my baby uh yeah and you know there's people like that and it was one of the things i said about finding an automotive technician somebody to work on your vehicle and somebody to fix it is what kind of car owner are you would you say that you are you know i don't care about it and i'm just going to drive it into the ground or are you like sam or are you like me or other people who it's kind of your baby it's you know, it's like the buggy. If something needs to be fixed, I just take it in and get it fixed. And I will not ever drive a vehicle that has questionable tires on it. Uh, it's the only thing between you and the pavement. It's it's where the rubber hits the road. And, uh, you know, you only have about this much 
of the tire that's actually contacting the road. So know that, uh, you know, I will never, never uh, compromise on tires. So uh, Tim said, watch CBC Marketplace from about two weeks ago about auto theft. Uh, scary. Uh, what were they saying, Tim, about auto theft? Is it just something that a lot of people are doing that they're able to steal vehicles quite easily? Uh, Goose, uh, if you could compare defensive driving to a martial art, what martial art would you compare it to? Uh, Goose, I'm going to have to give that some thought if I would think about martial arts. I would probably... I would probably compare it to any one of the stand-up striking arts. Not so much jujitsu because jujitsu is very intimate. It's very close contact, as is wrestling and judo. Whereas karate, striking arts, uh, you know, any one of the Mu Thai, those types of things, it's really about space management. It's really about creating range. And with driving, as we know, you need to control and manage space around your vehicle and especially in front of your vehicle. If you can control that space in front of your vehicle, that's what's going to keep you safe. And it's the same thing with fighting arts, that those striking arts that you need to create that space. You need to have that range. You need to understand that and have a very acute understanding of that to keep yourself safe and keep yourself out of striking distance so you don't get you know struck in the head. Or kicked in some place that really hurts. All right. Uh, Emperor, practice makes perfect with everything, especially driving. And that is very true. And as well, you know, some of that has been said that, you know, good practice or the correct practice makes perfection, right? That you get better at a skill. Uh, if you can be practicing the wrong thing, so you need to get the right tutelage. You need to have the right instructors in place. You need to get the right information. And this is another thing that I talked about in the response video that I did a couple of weeks ago about Evan, who left a comment at the beginning that I, I didn't answer, uh, that um, you need to get the right information. And he was referring me to another video that was done in Australia where they said, oh, you know, you can change lanes in an intersection. You can turn into whatever lane you want when you're turning right or turning left. And, you know, yes, you can. And, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So you need to be critical of the source of the information because we have so much access to information now it's just like everybody's putting information out there but are they giving you the right information are they giving you the correct information and it comes back to practice makes perfect yes practice makes perfect but make sure that the source of the information and the skills and abilities that you're practicing are they the right skills and abilities be critical of the source of information that you're getting so that you can be better, okay? And you can be, you can improve your skills. Because our job, and I forget what I was watching, I was watching something or listening to something the other day that they, they, they said and believed that our job in life as we grow older is to be better. It's just to be better and grow. And I, I agree with that, right? And to be better drivers, to be safer drivers is just... To be better every day, to be a little bit better, right? But Because we're going to make mistakes. But are we going to make less severe mistakes as we're moving forward, as we're learning, as we're becoming safer, smarter drivers? Okay? Uh, Peachy, what is the best way to deal with traffic jams? Uh, Peachy, in my experience, and, and you know maybe some of the other smart drivers here can weigh in on this as well or r respond to their experience with traffic jams. Uh, most of the time I find with traffic jams that they don't last very long. If there's a car crash or those types of things, probably the longest I've ever been stuck in a traffic jam was probably an hour and a half and it was in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I eventually turned around and found another, uh, another way to go which is not something I usually do. Usually I just wait out congestion because if it's less than half an hour, you might as well just wait it out. It's not really worth trying to find your way around and navigating those types of things. It's certainly a lot easier in this day and age with you know GPS and phones and those types of things 
to get your, your way around in those types of things. Now, the other thing on long trips is to know that in the morning there's going to be rush hour going into town, into a major metropolitan cities, and in the afternoon there's going to be rush hour coming out of town. So you can know that that is going to happen. That's predictable. And you can avoid that. So, the you know, you can simply say to yourself, listen, we're going into Atlanta, Georgia to visit friends and family and stay there for the, you know, the Easter weekend. We're going to time it so that we leave either later in the day or earlier in the morning so that we can miss the rush hour. Now, if you're going in in the afternoon, obviously traffic's coming out, so you're not going to have any traffic jams or congestions or those types of things. But stuff happens, right? Traffic crashes, construction delays. And on the note of construction, you can look that up on the internet. And Google is really good in terms of planning uh, to tell you where construction is and when delays are. And make sure that you do look that up because going to Calgary here... Uh, outside of Golden on the Trans Canada Highway, they have been having uh, intermittent closings of the highway, and they will post that on Drive BC website. So know that for the U.S. as well, that they will have websites that will tell you when construction is, when roads are closed, and those types of things, where the detours are, and whatnot. So this is all part of doing your navigation for your long trips to avoid congestion, avoid backups and traffic jams, and those types of things. Okay, and if you're traveling for across time zones <laughs> be sure that you take note of time zone changes as well because when you go from where i live to calgary you're losing an hour you're crossing a um a uh, <laughs> time zone okay so you lose an hour uh going east from uh british columbia it's the same thing if you were in seattle or in Oregon or Idaho, if you were going east, you're gonna you're gonna cross a time zone, maybe even two, but you're probably not gonna go that far on uh, Easter weekend and whatnot. As well, Tim says uh, that you can listen to radio stations. Local radio stations will give you information. Pay attention to the road signs as you're driving. Uh, there will be road signs that will give you specific radio stations that you can tune in to get information as well about traffic congestion and delays and those types of things. Uh, Scott, Rick, uh, AAA came out with a new study on adaptive cruise control. It would make for a good Sunday night presentation. Both young adults and older drivers have issues with learning it. You should read it. Uh, Scott, if you could send me that that study, I would be very interested in looking at it because it would go nicely with my book uh, that I'm working on right now, uh, the, psychology, you know, the Psychology of Driving. So, yeah, I would be very interested in having a look at that. And it doesn't surprise me that uh, young adults and seniors are having difficulty with adaptive cruise controls. Uh, you know, even as much as I know and as even as much as I understand about driving, I am reluctant to use adaptive cruise control. I was talking to actually one of my mates who I do jujitsu with and he's a truck driver and he has a truck that has adaptive cruise control. <laughs> he says... Uh, if you're not paying attention, he says it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, because, you know, you can set it for two seconds following, three seconds following, or four seconds following distance behind another vehicle. And he says you get in the truck and he listens to uh, audiobooks while he's driving his truck. And he says you kind of get it in into it and you're kind of tuned into the book and that kind of thing. You're not really paying attention to your speed. And he says then you look down at the speedometer and you're doing 80 kilometers an hour, which is 50 miles an hour for a great period of time because the adaptive cruise control is stuck in behind a slow car and you didn't realize you get stuck in behind a slow car and the, the, the adaptive cruise control just slows you down, <laughs> which may or may not be a good thing. I don't know. You know, it's the, the, the jury is still out on that, but anyway, it'd be interesting to see the article for sure. Uh, a lot of drivers of the system can stop the car from crashing into the one ahead if there's a sudden stop. The study go goes gets into how drivers learn them. Okay, so that'll be interesting to see kind of the, uh, what do they call that? When the interaction of human beings with technology and with driving and machines and those types of things. There's a word for that that I'm trying to think of, but it's not, I'm having a brain cramp right now. 
Uh, Tyler, when I bought my vehicle used, it came with brand new sets of summers and winter tires. Uh, that's a great deal if you got that, Tyler. The other thing, uh, and I'll just say this while Tyler's talking about uh, tires, when you buy a secondhand vehicle and you get tires with it, make sure that you're looking at the date of the tires. If the tires are older than eight years old, be skeptical of that, especially if you're buying it from a dealership and the tires are older than eight years old because now they're saying that the shelf life of new tires is about eight years old. And you can just look that up on the internet, read the number on the side and it will tell you uh, how old the tires are. And actually the video that I did with Gary, he shows you how to do that and look up the date of manufacture on the tires because as I said, they have a shelf life and they will start to break down after eight years. So make sure you have good tires on your vehicles. Uh, Joe, the right route can help uh, big time from the southwest to the Great Lakes take I-80 through Nebraska. It's boring, but not as tense as I-44 through the Ozarks, uh, Tulsa, uh, Joplin, St. Louis, especially in the rain. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, Joe. Uh, you know, and the other piece about long trips, if you're not in a great hurry, sometimes you can take an alternate route and it's much nicer, much prettier, a much more relaxing and enjoyable drive. For example, going across the Coke here, the Coke is for if you want to drive from, you know, Merritt or Kamloops to Vancouver and you're, you know, head down, bum up and you're, you're going to Vancouver. Whereas if you want a nice drive through the mountains, the Fraser Canyon, you take the Fraser Highway, uh, the Trans Canada Highway. It's an hour longer, but it is an absolutely brilliant, incredible drive through the mountains. So if you ever get a chance to do that drive, definitely do that. Uh, Sam, I started recording road test sites here in New York because so many people don't know what the sites look like or how to get to them. It also helps them see what it looks like to take a driver's test. Uh, Sam, we can't uh, thank you enough for creating that resource because as you said, some people don't even know where they are. I mean, the one that you took me to there in the Bronx, I mean, basically you're, you're, you're stopped at the edge of the road next to a cinder block wall and it's like oh here's where they're going to do the driver's test and this is the other thing uh that we're talking about with driver's tests and those types of things make sure you go to the toilet before you show up for your driver's test and there in new york there isn't going to be an office there aren't going to be bathroom facilities and those types of things so make sure that you go to the toilet before you show up for your driver's test so that you can be successful uh, on your driver's test Okay, uh, Mallory says, look for landmarks to help you get to your destination as well. And you're absolutely right, uh, Mallory, when you are doing your work on Google and using your navigation tools, software, and those types of things, make sure that you're looking for exit numbers. Okay, all of the interstates are going to have exit numbers. Uh, you know, know that even number interstates go east-west in the U.S., uh, know that odd numbered interstates go north south three digits are either a ring road around a city a spur into the city or they bypass part of the uh, interstate to facilitate you know to try and reduce congestion so know that get the exit numbers the exit numbers are the same as the mile markers it's also a defensive driving strategy that you can use so for example if you're you know that you're going to get off at 378 and you're at 375, you know that you have three miles to go before you get up the road and you have to get off at your exit. So you have three miles that you can start moving over to the right in preparation to exit. Uh, Crystal, I'm doing awesome. I, I just saw your comment there. Hello. <laughs> I apologize. I missed that. Thank you for reminding me that you're here and saying hi. That's great. I'm happy to hear that you're well. Uh, Goose, I wonder what it's like to drive in Mexico City. I hear it's pretty busy. Uh, Goose, it is very busy. I've heard my friend uh, Bill Walker, who I've done some videos with here on the channel, he winters in Mexico City. And yes, it's it's a busy. It's a very busy. Uh, I mean, keep in mind that Mexico City is one of the largest metropolitan cities in the world. And of course, you know, traffic management isn't what it is here in North America, so it is a bit crazy there. Uh, 
Epic, my friend, important for long distance trips is pulling over into a service area because you can actually change drivers there just like how truck drivers use them for changing drivers or taking breaks. And that is absolutely correct. Or as they're referred to in the trucking industry in the US, pickle parks along the interstates, very convenient for stopping, getting out, going for a little bit of a walk. There's uh, bathroom breaks there. I mean, even some of them, the, you know, they have uh, kiosks where you can buy coffee and whatnot. Not too many of them, but some of them you can. So uh, very nice there. Uh, Tim, good night, my friend. All the best. We will see you next week. Thank you for your contributions to helping out with the long trips and uh, tips for uh, smart drivers. All the best, my friend. Uh, Eric, uh, today driving out of Manhattan in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, multiple people tried to swiftly change lanes as if it would get them there faster, more like just causing issues for everyone else. Uh, yeah, Eric, I, and I know what you're saying. I've been in that bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic in the large metropolitan cities in New York City and Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Los Angeles, all of those places. And like you said, people are changing, changing lanes and trying to jockey for position and trying to think they're going to get there faster and those types of things. And they really aren't. I mean, they might gain a couple of spaces in front of you, but they're really not going anywhere. So it's better to just stay back, make sure that you have that space in front of your vehicle that one vehicle space in case you know get distracted or you're looking at something else or picking something up out of the center console then you have that space buffer you can keep yourself safe and not rear end the vehicle in front of you okay uh peachy i just saw it uh how can you find out the nicest route usually they just say toll roads or not and quickest route uh google so peachy one of the ways that you can do it is so you can figure out the route where you're going to go and then you can say you know pick some of the places along that route on google and then just and then just type it in and do a search query and say you know attractions to look at near and you know so if you're going to st louis missouri for example you can say attractions near st louis missouri and figure out which way you're coming into st louis for example if you're coming in from the north or you're coming from the east and you pick some of the cities along that route, you can say attractions near this city or this town or village, things that I should see. Because there's all kinds of, uh, it's called boosterism when small villages and towns try to get you to come in for tourism and those types of things and look at stuff there. And so, you know, they have websites and information that you can look up and find. So there's, there's lots of information on the internet that will you know, help you to plan a really interesting trip and to see stuff and those types of things. So it depends, you know, if you're going to take a trip and you're, you know, taking your time and going places and those types of things, uh, or you're just, you just want to go from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Now, the other thing, uh, Peachy, is that there will be tourist information centers. They'll have lots of information about tourist attractions and those types of things to recommend you going places. The other thing is, you know, go into gas stations and uh, filling stations and whatnot. Ask the clerk. I mean, if they're not busy, they're more than happy to give you some information about things that you should stop and see in places you can go and whatnot for the, you know, best trip. Uh, Tavardo, thank you so much for your, I love listening. Uh, glad, glad you're tuning in. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Sam, I even recorded an examiner, but I blurred his face to protect his identity. I don't want people seeing their face online if they are unsuccessful and don't know, probably bad mouth them and stuff. Yeah, and that's definitely a good thing. But if you can, you know, record examiners, that's really great uh, for sure, Sam, especially if you have their permission. Uh, Goose, I have a student from Mexico City going for his G tomorrow morning. Well, wishing him all the good luck and sending positive energy there, Goose, uh, for your student going for his test and I'm sure he's going to be successful if he was taking lessons with you for sure uh Joe coming across northern Ontario highway 17 along the Lake Superior shoreline is gorgeous in the summer but in the winter snowstorm it is hellish so take highway 11 instead boring but safer uh yes uh we came across highway 17 this summer it's really pretty up there but um northern Ontario as a whole is not that interesting rock tree Hydro pole, rock, tree, water. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Northern Ontario. A lot. Two days worth of Northern Ontario. 
Uh, Scott, Rick, I have a driving update. Last month, I rented a U-Haul pickup for three days and got 90 miles of practice in. Only one mistake at night. I took uh, no turn on a red from an intersection. I live both close by. So that is great news, uh, Scott, that you're working and practicing uh, to pass your driver's test. Uh, Sam said, my next video will be on examiners getting attacked on the job and caught on video. It was in the news. Oh, wow. That is just crazy that people are doing that. But unfortunately, we live in that kind of world where people are not successful on their driver's test and feel the need to blame the examiner when the examiner's just doing his or her job and trying to keep you safe so that you have, you know, a, a benchmark of skills and abilities to drive a vehicle. You know, we were talking about that today you know, somebody's son failed the driving test. And then, of course, it was the examiner's fault that the person failed their driver's test. And, you know, I know that it sucks that you failed your driver's test if you were unsuccessful on your driver's test. But the bottom line is 9 out of 10 times, your skills and abilities were not at a level that would allow you to pass a driver's test. And there's a reason. It's public safety. You have to have a skill set that meets minimum standards for you to pass a driver's test. And let me reiterate that. It is minimum standard. You have minimum of skills and abilities to drive a car when you get a driver's license. You are not in any way a competent, safe driver. You need experience to be a safe, smart driver and keep yourself out of trouble. You have some skills and abilities, but you are by no means highly competent driver when you get a driver's license it's minimum skills uh tavardo uh you advised really helped me the first time driving in the states and on the right side of the road excellent uh tavardo remind me where are you from now you're obviously from someplace where they drive on the left side of the road uh tavardo thank you so much for your uh compliments that's awesome my friend and yes we're, we're gonna keep going and helping people uh, Joe, I seem to recall a study in the Netherlands that showed that the more lane hopping was going on, the slower the average speed for everyone. Pretty well done study, meticulous. And uh, Joe, that that tracks. That all seems to track. Uh, Richard, how do you avoid getting shot by US LEOs? Uh, what's an LEO? Uh, let me know. Uh, Bluffer, hey Rick, how are you doing? Do you have any videos on passing on the highway? Uh, Bluffer, yes I do. Corey will put that up for you. Uh, there you go from Turks and Caicos. Awesome. Tavardo, so awesome that you're here. Thank you so much. D, examiners in Ontario removed seatbelt and cracked door open before giving results because of assaults. Uh, D, probably what's going to happen with examiners in Ontario is they're going to do the same thing that they're now doing in New York State. In New York State, you do not get your results after your driver's test you have to log on to the dmv website and you will get your results by 6 p.m that evening and i suspect that that is what is going to happen with all dmvs with all test centers because of the potential violence against driving examiners and it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate because when drivers are unsuccessful on their driver's test they get valuable feedback but they're not getting valuable feedback uh, you know, after the fact, but you know, it's one thing or the other, you do have to protect the safety of driving examiners. So if they're putting it online, I think it's probably just a better thing. Uh, how do you avoid getting shot by? Okay. So Richard. All right. So this, this is a valid question and maybe this is what I'll do in two weeks is I will do a uh, live stream on getting pulled over by police officers uh, basically law you know the risk of getting shot by a police officer is quite low unless you're doing something goofy okay don't do anything goofy don't do anything in the vehicle before telling the officer what you're doing if you're going to reach for something or you're going to reach in the glove box reach in the center console say to the officer before you reach for something in the vehicle listen my license and registration is in the glove box. Would you like me to get it for you? That's what you need to say. As well, 
do not be adversarial. I put a video up on emergency vehicles and it's unfortunate that Tim's not here anymore because Tim could give us some feedback on this as well with being pulled over by police officers. Uh, I put a video up on emergency vehicles and one of the emergency vehicles was the CP rail police here uh, in Western Canada. We have police officers that police just the railway because we have a lot of transients along the railway. And the number of people who are saying, oh, that police officer doesn't have any authority. If you get pulled over by a police officer and you are adversarial, as soon as they come to the window, you're questioning their authority about whether they have authority or not to pull you over. I guarantee you that they are going to put the screws to you. They are going to be adversarial in response. So be nice be pleasant answer their questions and do not question their authority as soon as you start questioning their authority you don't have the right to look at my driver's license i am an american citizen i have these rights blah 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 i can pretty much guarantee you that it is not going to go well for you so first rule of thumb of getting pulled over be pleasant answer the officer's question and do not do anything without first telling the police officer what you're going to do. I got pulled over numerous times in the US when I was driving truck for speeding and doing goofy things because I did. I never had a problem with any of the officers. The officers were all very professional. The only time that I got into trouble with a police officer in the States was when I said, oh, is there a problem officer? <laughs> I was clearly out in the third lane where I was not supposed to be in a big truck and uh, that officer screamed at me. So know that, okay? Follow the instructions, tell them what you're doing, what you're reaching for and those types of things. Don't do, don't be adversarial. If you're adversarial, it's not gonna go well for you. I can tell you that right now. Uh, Sam, I interviewed a police officer on my channel twice and those types of questions, they are good. Excellent. Uh, Bluffer, while driving, I am always thinking of questions to ask you when I forget by the time Sunday comes around. Uh, Bluffer, you got to keep yourself with a little note paper and then you can write those uh, questions down. Uh, Mallory, if not the driving examiner's fault, if you failed or unsuccessful, you're absolutely right, Mallory. Uh, Bluffer, you're most welcome. Uh, Richard, Richard uh, traveling off the beaten track, scenic route. Uh, Richard, like I said, don't be adversarial. Answer the officer's question. Tell them what you're going to do. If you're going to reach for something in the vehicle or those types of things, don't make any sudden movements. Just do what they ask you to do, okay? And you're going to be fine. Uh, Peachy, that's horrible for examples. A examiners, people need to take personal responsibility. They absolutely do, but unfortunately, people don't. Uh, Richard, okay, we talked about that. Uh, Scott, having a backup camera on a pickup truck are fantastic, and you're absolutely right. I do like backup cameras as technology. It's another tool that helps me to back up safely. Uh, Gicky, I have a couple of learners failed their practical test because they needed to use the toilet on the one-hour test, and I always recommend to stay hydrated and use the toilet before testing or lessons. <laughs> uh, Gicky, yes, absolutely use the toilet. It's really tough to complete a test when you have your legs crossed because you have to go to the toilet. Uh, Corey's put up full interview with a police officer. What happens when you get pulled over? Excellent. Uh, with Big Mac Sam and have a look at that if you have any questions about that. All right, we're going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you for all your comments. Uh, thank you for all your questions. Gustavo, thank you so much. Uh, can I go five kilometers an hour over the speed in Toronto? Uh, if you are preparing for a driver's test, then no. If you have your license and have passed your driver's test, then yes, you can keep up with the traffic flow and go five kilometers an hour over. They will not pull you over for that. All right, so thank you for that super chat. All the very best. Uh, if you're going for a driver's test, check out past your driver's test first time over at the uh, Smart Drive Test website. A bonus, we throw in both the winter and defensive driving smart courses. Guaranteed to pass your driver's test first time. You can pick that up for about 38 bucks. Uh, check down in the uh, description here. Corey will put up the link for that. And uh, if you have a driver's test coming up, good luck on that. If you passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks, awesome news that you passed. Congratulations. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. 
All the best. Bye now.